Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Raw Last Scott here on Saturday. It is June the 23rd, 2018. I'm going to look at all the races on today's program from Ascot, but before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kid 5 for more selections from race courses around the world, and I mean it around the world. It's the final day of the Royal Meeting, and uh, you know, it's been a great week. Um, you have some very good races today, highlighted by the Diamond Jubilee. Um, so uh, let's get on to Today's, today's action. Uh, six races to look at, starting off with the first race, the 2.30. The 2.30, it is the Chesham Stakes. It's a list of stakes for Class 1 horses, going for a purse of $121,500. This race is for two-year-olds only um, here. Field of 11 horses, going the distance of ground of 1,400 meters, or the distance of ground of seven furlongs on the turf course. Um, the, the pick four here in North America starts off with this race, but the pick four is a little weird today. It's going to connect races one, and then we're going to go into race number two, but here's the thing after race two. They're going to head over to race number four, not three. So it's w races one, two, four, and then we're going to go to race number six. So races one, two, four, and six are the pick four today here in North America. So just keep that in mind. Um, I think it's very hittable today. Um, but um, my top selection in this uh, Chesham Stakes... I'm going to go to the 9 horse, Beyond Reason. I'm going to go 9-10-1 in the TriCast of the Trifecta. 9-10-1, TriCast Trifecta. Top selection, the 9 horse, Beyond Reason. Gaddafi known, Tiro Flea by Australia. Charlie Appleby trained, William Buick gets leg up. This horse's most recent outing came on the 6th of June. That came at Kempton on the all-weather. Six furlongs in a Class 5 Phillies novice race. This horse won by four lengths. It was, and what was good about that race, this horse had a wide post trend. You don't win that wide at at Kempton very often. Only really good horses win there, and this horse just took clear in the stretch. Had a very nice, easy victory. I want to say that was even more impressive than the 10 horse Natalie's Joy's maiden victory. Um, I, I think this horse at 520 here in the States is a good price on her, um, you know, because that Kempton race was very good. Before that, Newmark on the 19th of May, six furlongs in a Phillies novice class 4 event. This horse finished second by two lengths, was the 5 2 favor, and she just never really got going. She needed that little extra kick, but she, she really ran well other than that she's bred to go uh, over seven furlongs here but i think seven furlong trip for the first time in this race she should really like a lot um you know she's she has a great pedigree here and i th i just think she'll run a very big one so watch out for her uh another horse i'll use in the pick four is the 10 horse natalie's joy she had the second most impressive race in this race a second most impressive win in this race behind Beyond Reason. Um, you know, that race came on the 26th of May. Goodwood, six furlongs on good ground in Class 4 Mains Philly race. Horse won by six lengths and just won for fun. A very easy victory there. Um, you know, she has a great pedigree here. She's definitely fast enough to win. I just don't like the price of 9 to 5, but she will be a use in my pick four um, here in North America. Now, to um, if I would do an each way wager on her. Probably no, because her, her odds are very low, but she'll definitely be used in a tri-cast or, um, or in a forecast exact, a trifecta, as we call them here in America. Um, but um, to win, not, you know, as a w just a solid win wager, not my personal liking, but she is definitely good enough to get the pick four on your pick four ticket. But um, to recap my bets now for the first race from Royal Alaska here on the Saturday afternoon, it's the 2.30. Um, it's the Chesham Stakes. It's the top selection here. I like the nine horse beyond reason. I'm going to go nine ten one in the TriCast or the Trifecta, I'll go 9-10 in my pick four to start it off. So now let's get on to race number two. The 305, the second race from Royal Ascot. It's the Group 2 Hardwick Stakes. It's a Group 2 race here for Class 1 horses, going for a purse of $304,000. This race is for four-year-olds and upwards. We have only six horses here going the distance of ground of 2,400 meters or the distance of ground of a mile and a half. It's a small field, but it's a very good quality group of horses. Um, my top selection here, um, I like the three-horse Crystal Ocean. I'm going to go 3-5-4 in the trial cast of the trifecta. Three, five, four, Tricast, Trifecta. Uh, top selection here, the three horse Crystal Ocean, Ry Moore's on the Sir Michael Stout trained four year old Colt by See the Stars. You know, Ry Moore usually rides for Coolmore all the time, but he actually went off the Coolmore horses in this race. 
to go to Sir Michael Stout uh, horse, Crystal Ocean, I think that's a good thing because I just don't think the Coolmore horses in this race are very, you know, I don't think they're going to get a piece of it. I'll get onto it in, in a little bit after I talk about Crystal Ocean. Ryan Moore, like I said, is on this one. Um, his most recent out routing came on the 19th of May at Newbury, a mile and a half on very firm ground, similar to today's going and the Group 3 Al Rain Stakes. This horse won by six lengths, and at 40 cents a dollar, this horse just walked in the park. A very easy race for this horse, second off the break, even first off the break at, in the Gordon Richards Stakes at Sandown, a mile and a quarter, April 27th. You know, even that race, he, he won by a nose, could have won by a little bit more, but, um, you know, they, just looking at the the stretch run of that race, Ryan Moore didn't really want to kill the horse. You know, he wanted to save a little bit in the tank, even though with that small margin and just getting there, but, you know, could have won by more, I personally think. Um, but, you know, that was a decent effort. And then in the St. Ledger at Doncaster last... Um, September. This horse finished second by half length behind Capri, who I believe is a, a Coolmore horse. This horse just really couldn't get there at the end. Um, you know, Capri just ran a little bit of a better race. And then the Gordon Stakes at Goodwood last um, August. Horse won by three and a half lengths. He just quickened up nicely. Very easy victory. He ran at Royal Alaska last year in the King Edward the second Stakes. And uh, he finished third by one and three quarter lengths. And he just never didn't have, he didn't have the best trips that day. He never really quickened up. It wasn't his day to win. Um, maybe the wide post draw affected him. But I just think he's a lot better horse this year than he was as a three-year-old. He's more mature. I'm just looking at his runs. He looks more concentrated. I think he, re he should really run a big one, so watch out. Um, maybe for the a little bit of a price play in this race, I think the five-horse Rare Rhythm can get a piece of it. Um, he's at 8-1. to one. William Buick's on this one for Charlie Appleby. You know, he's making his first start in the UK since last July, but his most recent outing um, came uh, on the 3rd of June in France at, um, at Chantilly uh, in, the, in the Group 2 Grand Prix de Chantilly. Uh, uh, going a mile and a half. This horse finished fourth by three and a half lengths that day. The winner, Vald Guest, just ran a very good race on the front end. This horse just never really got going. Something I noticed about that uh, that uh, day at uh, Chantilly, it was pre Jockey Club Day. The horses from the UK weren't really firing a lot, and this horse just really never got into it. It was his first off a layoff also. It started before in the Dubai Gold Cup, the Group 2 Dubai Gold Cup that made out on two miles on World Cup night. This horse finished third by one quarter lengths. A little bit of a wide post run. He just couldn't get that kick on Var Zero Vet, who just ran a hell of a race, then went our next start out in France, and then finished second in the um, in the Gold Cup on Thursday afternoon. He ran, a, I think, he ran a decent race in the Gold Cup of Zero Bad, but this horse he just couldn't get that good kick. Um, but he did turn the tables, start four against Zero Bad, where he beat him in the Natal Sheba Trophy very nicely by one and three quarter lengths. Both those one two ran great races there, um, and then illicit stakes before that at York last summer's last race in the UK, mile three quarters, course one by two and three quarter lengths, just quickened up nicely very easy victory. He won in a handicap last year at Royal Alaska very nicely and uh, with a wide post draw also. And I just think here today, at, you know, at 8-1, to one, I think he can get a piece of it. He'll be used as a, a little bit of a long shot play, small each way wager, um, and also you know, he'll be used on my pick four here in North America. Um, so watch out. A horse I do not like, and I, uh, you know, it's the four horse Idaho. I have a feeling he's going to get bent to the ground for nothing. Um, you know, he, he's a good horse in lower he, he's a good group three quality horse or if he comes to america he'll be a good grade one quality horse and just uh, facing you know tougher group two or group one horses in europe he just doesn't really show up in my eyes um you know he, he i think they're just setting their heights a little bit too high for this horse um you know he, he you know he, he does better in the lower classes i think the lower group classes just not the higher ones he's not a use for me here but um if he ever comes over to north america facing our crappy turf horses i think he has a massive chance to win but just not in europe against the best horses in the world um you know just uh, he's not a use for me here and uh, like i said he probably will get men to the ground but um he won't getting he won't be getting a cent from me other than I think he's good enough to get third in my try cast. That's that's the best position I think. But other than that, not to be used on a win or each way wager. But to recap my bets now for the second race from Royal Ascot, it's the 305. It's the Group Two Hardwick Stakes as a top selection here. I like the three horse Crystal Ocean. Gonna go three five four in the tri cast or the trifecta. I'll go three five in the pick four. So now let's get on to race number three. 
Race number three, the 340 from Royal Ascot. It's the Windsor Castle Stakes. It's listed stakes for Class 1 horses, going for a purse of $121,500. This race is for two-year-olds only. Field of 28 horses going the distance of ground of 1,000 meters or five furlongs on the turf course. Very wide open race. Uh, you know, a lot of races this week are were, were wide open. Uh, this is no exception. Um, I'm going to give you two horses I think can win. Those two horses are the 27 horse. Moonlight Romance and the 23 um, horse uh, Van Beethoven. Um, those are, I think it's a two horse race between those two. Uh, first choice to talk about is number 27 horse Moonlight Romance. Joel Rosario is on this Wesley Ward train. Two year old Philly by liaison. You know, this horse had a great run a few weeks ago at. Um, Belmont here in New York, uh, my local track. Five furlongs on the Widener turf course and a maiden special weight. This horse won for fun that day. Joel Rosario did not even touch the horse. This horse just took off clear. Um, you know, the, the ground was very dry that after, uh, well, not dry, but um, very similar to the ground you're going to see today. Good to firm, I would say, but he just took off very clear. His first outing before that was on the dirt at Keeneland. Four and a half furlongs and maiden special weight. He finished second by two and a quarter lengths behind Shang Shang Shang, who won on Thursday afternoon. This horse was just second best behind him, but ran a decent effort. But I think here, back to turf uh, with the straightaway, I think this horse could really run a massive race. Um, just go watch that Belmont race, because it was very impressive. Um, out of anybody in this race today, I think he had the most impressive run in you know, just watch out for him to run a big one here today. Um, problem is, his odds here in North America are going to be very low because of that race. And I'm probably in the UK also because Shang 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 won out of that Keeneland race. But um, I, I mean it. Just go... If you can't find the replay, if you're in the UK and you can't find the Belmont replays very easily, go to the um, Naira website, naira.com, and you can sign up for free. Go to that 27th of May race, the second race, and just watch it. Because he... I'm telling you, it was the most impressive race I've seen in quite a while for a two-year-old on turf at Belmont, because he didn't draw Rosario didn't even touch the horse, and he went for fun. Um, but um, I think coming here, he should really run a big one. Watch out for him. Another horse I think can run a big one is 23 horse. Van Beethoven. Rye Moore's on the St. O'Brien train. Two-year-old cult by Scat Datty. This horse's most recent outing came on the 26th of May at Cura. Six furlongs and illicit stakes. This horse finished second by two and a quarter lengths Van Fairland, who didn't have the best runs this week. Um, this horse just really couldn't get that good closing kick there. It wasn't his day to win. Before that, in May, six furlongs and uh, just a basic handicap. This horse won by three and a half lengths and just closed up well to get the victory second off the break. All around decent effort there. And then at Newmarket, they're in a Craven meeting. Five prongs class for a novice race. Horse finished third by two and three quarter lengths. Never really got going until very late in the game. And it was the first time start for a two-year-old, but, you know, um, probably, you know, needed the experience. But I think here at 7-1, this horse could upset. But uh, if I uh, between these two horses, to, to give you a top selection, I think it would be the 27 horse at Moonlight Romance, because uh, I just think she can run a very big race. Uh, but, um, you know, if, if she doesn't run her race, um, Van Beethoven, I think, can run a big one also. But to recap my bets now for today's third race from Royal Ascot, the 340, it's the Windsor Castle Stakes. It's a top selection. I like the 27 horse moonlight romance i'm gonna go 27 23 that's my top two um i'll probably play a forecast box or an exacta box and do a very nice win wager maybe on a or each way wager on 27 horse moonlight romance so now let's get on to race number four from ask Race number four, the 420. It's the feature race of the afternoon from Royal Ascot. It's the Group 1 Diamond Jubilee Stakes. It's a Group 1 race for Class 1 horses going for a purse of $810,000. This race is for four-year-olds and upwards. Field the 12 horses going the 1,200-meter trip or six furlongs on the turf course. Um, it's a very wide-open race, and for the pick four here, I'm going to go many deep. Um, I'm going to go four deep, and I'll give you my top four in this race. Any of these four, I think, can win. Um, as a top selection here, I'm going to go to the number seven horse, Merchant Navy. I'm going to go 7914. 7914. I'll probably do an exact box with all four of them here, um, or forecast 
box or forecast combination, something what you, what you guys call them in Europe. Uh, in Europe. Um, but um, in the pick four, I'll go four deep. I maybe you can catch a price in this race. So seven, nine, one, four. That's my top four. I'll talk about all four of them. Starting off with my top selection, the seven horse Merchant Navy. Three to one, owned by Coolmore here. Aiden O'Brien trains. Ryan Moore gets the foot up on this one. This four year old Colt by Fastenet Rock. He made his first start in uh, Europe on the uh, 26th of May in Ireland at Curra. Uh, firm ground, six frongs in the Greenland Stakes. You know, this horse won by a length. He, he had a high weight of 132 pounds. He quickened up nicely and had a very nice victory there first off the break. But I just personally think second off the break, this horse will really be running a big one. He has a good wide post right here. Um, it's something throughout the week, the uh, the higher draws have been um, really been, uh, you know, the, the way to go. The low draws, uh, you know, aren't the best, but, um, y you know, b b before the, uh, Curra, when the source ran the 10th of March down under at Flemington, six furlongs in the Group 1 ne New Market Cup, you know, this horse finished third that day, y you know, it was a little bit of a weird race, he got beat by Red Kirk Warrior, who was actually running back into this race today, coming in from Australia, this horse, he just needed that little extra kick at the end, he didn't get it, but he ran well other than that, but it was still a weird race, um, and then before that, in, in the Rubitin Stakes at Caulfield, five and a half furlongs, 1100 meters 10th of February. Horse finished third by a neck. It was an all-out finish and he just couldn't get that good head in front. Personally, I think um, you know, I, I think Europe has the best horses in the world other than the sprinters. I think North America has the best sprinters and I think Australia has the best sprinters. Um, when it comes to turf sprinters now, in this race, I think the Australians have the edge. Um, you know, this horse has been doing very well um, in Australia. His one star in Europe has been very nice. He has the speed to win. Three to one is not the best price, but I think we're going to have to take it on him. Watch out for him to run a big one. Another horse I like here is the other um, Australian horse here, uh, Australian-based horse, the nine-horse Red Kirk Warrior. Um, he was bred here in the United Kingdom, um, but um, he's been doing his ru running uh, on the other side of the world. Um, Red Kirk Warrior, uh, seven-year-old gelding here, by Nat, uh, now Cato. Uh, Frankie de Torres on this one. Um, you know, this horse is most recent out and came in the Newmarket Handicap at um, Flemington a few weeks ago, or excuse me, a few months ago, six furlongs for uh, March 10th. This horse won by a nose, all out finish, he just got the head in front, and, you know, he ran a decent effort there, um, before that at Flemington, the 17th of February, and the Black Caviar Lightning Stakes, this horse won by a nose, another very good run for this horse, just getting there at the end, off a little bit of a break, and then before then, the Group 1 Darley Classic at Flemington, six furlongs November the 11th, you know, this horse didn't have the best of races that day, never really got into it, he, he just, you know, he just walked that day, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and, and walked as in a bad thing, not walked as in, you won easily. He just lost very, very badly. He finished 11th. It wasn't his day to win. Uh, and then before that, Randwick six furlongs. You know, he finished 10th, and he just had a hell of, hell of a bad trip. But um, I think here today, change of scenery off the break. At five to one, I think he can get a piece of it. Frankie Dutore is having a magical, magical week, and uh, you know I think he can cap it off with a good victory in this one. So watch out for him. Definitely using the pick four along with the uh, the uh, the American in this race, Bound for Nowhere. Uh, Joel Rosario is on this Wesley War train for you, called by the Factor. Um, uh, you know this horse. Uh, the, personally, the Factor. Before I get onto the horse, the sire of the Factor is a very, very speedy horse. Uh, he was uh, trained by Bob Baffert out in California, and he, he was just you know. A, a light, you know, very lightning fast, um, and uh, his prodigy have done very well. Um, you know, this horse, this horse has only lost twice. Both those losses have come in Europe. Um, you know, he lost in the Commonwealth Cup last year at Ascot, six furlongs, June 23rd. He finished fourth by four and a quarter lengths, and he just really couldn't get into it that day. It wasn't his day to win. And then they they ran him at Deauville in August, six and a half furlongs, 1,300 meters in the Group 1, Morris de Guise Stakes. This horse finished tenth by seven and a quarter lengths. And, you know, the winner, Brando, ran a great race. This horse just was never into it. But after that, he won a turf way, six furlongs, basic race by three quarters of length um, and then he won at Keelan very easily in the Shaker Town by four lengths just you know just opening up easily um, but um, you know I think off the break here today he should really run a big one I eight to one if he gets to sp the, you know a good lead and could s slow down the fractions a little bit I really think he can upset here you know um, what, what do you call it? Um, uh, Wesley Ward has won this race in the past about three years ago I believe with undrafted um, 
So I think I know he, he knows what he's doing. But eight to one, I watch out for him. But personally, I don't think you're going to get eight to one in North America. In New York, you'll probably get a nice odds. But here in North America, with the toe pool, everybody knows Wesley Ward and Joe Alrosario. So you're probably going to see from the eight to one morning line, this horse will probably go down to like nine to two, um, maybe even down to three to one. Uh, so uh, you know, eight to one here in North America is really praying. Um, but he should still run a very good run so watch out for him another horse i'm going to talk about is the um is the number four horse here harry's angel adam kirby's on this clive cox train for a cult by dark angel um you know th this horse's most recent outing came at york a few weeks ago six furlongs in the uh duke of york uh, logistics stakes you know this horse won by two legs it was his first start of the year he only had a few other rivals a, a lot of them i believe scratched out of that race were through but um you know he just won very easily um one thing that scares me a little bit with him. His last race here at Ascot on very wet ground in the fall in the Champions Day and the Champion Sprint, you know, that race was a shit race to be honest with you. He finished fourth by two and a quarter lengths and he just never was really into running. He just couldn't keep up with them. You know, the ground was very wet, but it, 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 you, you want to see horses here at Ascot really run well in their previous start at Ascot, and he just didn't, he just never really keep it, kept up with them, um, and, and then before then, the Sprint Cup at Haydock, again, heavy ground, he didn't win by four lengths, beating some tough horses there, you know, it, it, that was a good race, but he should, going back to the Ascot race, next start out, he should really have improved, but he didn't, but before then, he won the July Cup at Newmarket very easily. And then he finished second by three quarters length behind Caravaggio in the Commonwealth last year. I uh, just missed, but he ran a decent effort. I think here, you know, he should run a big one, but he's not, you know, I have him fourth. He's in my top four. He's number four. So I like him a little bit, but not so much. But he's a horse, you know, I would use in the pick four uh, to keep you, uh, you know, just a little... You know, to keep you a little occupied or, you know, keep your ticket, you know, uh, have everything covered. Can't speak, sorry. It is uh, 8 o'clock in the morning and I haven't had enough coffee yet. But, uh, you know, put him on your pick four. But, you know, he, he's not a good w each way wager for me because uh, he's too low in price. But I think there's other ways you could go with each way wager to make some money, um, you know, with the uh, nine and one horse here. But, um, you know, so, uh, you know, it's a very wide open race. So uh, let me recap my selections for the fourth here. The 420 from Ascot. It's feature race of the afternoon. It's the Group 1 Diamond Jubilee Stakes. It's a top selection here. I like the 7 horse Merchant Navy. Gonna go 7914 in the Superfecta. Um, 7914 Super or or that's my top 4. I'm probably gonna play an exacta box or a forecast box. Uh, 7914. And I'll use 7914 in my pick 4 here. Uh, so now let's get on to race number 5 from Ascot. Race number five, the five o'clock from Royal Alaska. It's the Walking Ham Stakes. It's part of the Heritage Handicap. It's a class two handicap going for a purse of $236,500. This race is for three year olds and upwards, rated zero to 110. Field of 28 horses going the distance of ground of 1,200 meters or six furlongs on the turf course. My top selection here, I like, um, well, I'm not going to give you a top selection. I'm going to give you three horses I think can win because um, it's a very wide open race. We have 28 horses here. Um, three horses I think can win are the seven horse Dreamfield, the number eight horse Undrafted, and the number 26 horse here, the 26 who was Blue de Vega, so seven, eight, 26. First horse I'll be talking about is number seven horse Dreamfield, uh, Breaking from Bear number eight, Gaddafino, and John Gosden trained, James Doyle gets the leg up on this four year old by Oasis Dream. This horse has only had three starts, but all three starts have been very nice. Most recently, 11th of May here at Ascot, six frongs on firm ground, similar to today's going, th and a three, uh, class three handicap four year old plus. This horse won by one quarter length, so with a heavy weight of 133 pounds. This horse just quickened up nicely and had a very easy victory. Um, that's the perfect kind of race you want to see before coming into this very tough handicap. It was an all-around decent effort off a break also of over a ye almost two years. Start before came 19th of October of 2016 at Newmarket. Seven Frongs in a Class 2 handicap. He won by a nose and he got there in the at end, but he was under the drive most of the race. Uh, and then before that, a, a few weeks earlier at Nottingham, Six Frongs Class 5 main race. This horse won by eight lengths and he just walked that day. Very easy victory. Um, I like this horse a lot second off the break. His last race was pretty impressive for his first race in nearly two years. 
but the problem is he's four to one in a twenty-eight horse field. Uh, it's not a good price, but you know he still should run a big one. I think the eight horse in draft it could really run a big one. Coming back to uh to the race course, this horse had his best success on. I think the eight horse in drafted Frankie Dettori is on this Wesley Ward train eight-year-old gunling by Purim. Um, you know this horse. Um, you know he hasn't been running in his tough graded races here in America lately, but he, he's due for a big run, and I think he can run a big one today with a lot of pace in this race. He's been looking for a race he can really get a good closing kick, and I think this one, he can, um, if he's a little bit closer, I think, not so far behind, but, you know, still, you know, just track and leader pairs, hopefully he could do, but um, his most recent outing came here in New York at Belmont, seven furlongs in uh, a grade two race. He finished third by three and three quarter lengths behind blind ambition. He had a decent turn of foot at the end. You know, the Widener turf course at Belmont tends to be more towards front runners. The closers really have a little bit of a hard time to get there. But this horse, he did well that day for his first start of the year. The 5th of November was his start before a Churchill. Five rungs in a lounge race. He won by length. The, tur the, the Churchill turf course does play towards closers when you have a fast pace. That day you had a fast quarters, and he just had a great turn of foot to get the victory there. Um, and then before that, allowance optional claimer at Belmont. Six rungs in October the 5th. He finished second by half length that was an allowance race but it could have been a great three race in north america because it was a good quality group of horses he had a decent turn of foot on a race course that does not play towards closers and he just missed but he ran well there um and then before then the kentucky downs turf sprint at kentucky downs six and a half rungs September the ninth he finished third by half length he just missed but it wasn't a bad race if he saved a little bit of ground i think he could have got the victory but i think coming back here with a fast pace at 15 to 1 he's a horse that you could really run a big one so watch out for him and another horse i think can run a big one here is going to be the number 26 horse blue de vega ocean murphy's on the schrober cowell train five-year-old cult by Luke de Vega. This horse's most recent outing came um, almost two weeks ago now, or actually actually two weeks ago now, the 9th of June at Haydock. Five rungs on class one listed stakes. This horse finished ninth by five and a half lengths behind Muthmir. You know, Muthmir ran a hell of a race, which surprised me that day. This horse just really weakened out of it. He should have did a lot better than he did. Before that, a week earlier at Epsom, five rungs on a class two handicap, the dash. He finished fourth by four lengths that day. He wasn't going to catch the winner, but he, he, he ran quite well there. Um, and then a third squad for owns and a class two handicap horse finished second by a neck he again he ran a great race there to uh, as a prep race for the f7 dash um you know it wasn't a bad run there and then before that newberry five for owns class two handicap finished fourth by one three corner lengths he didn't get the victory but he didn't run quite well he's been up there in his last few other than the haydock race i think here today he can run a big one also i'll take my chances with him um so watch out so to recap my bets for today's fifth race, to five o'clock from Royal Alaska, it's the Walking Ham Stakes. I'm gonna go with the seven horse Dreamfield. I'm gonna use also the eight horse Undrafted. I think he can run a big one at fifteen to one. And I'm gonna use the twenty six horse here, Blue De Vega. So seven, eight, twenty six. I'll do probably an exact box with all three of them, or a forecast box. And I might do a small each way wager on all three of them if their odds are good. But definitely Undrafted. I think he could, like I said, run a big one. So now let's get on to race number six from Ask. The 535, the sixth race from Royal Ascot. It's the Queen Alexandra Stakes. It's a conditions race for class two horses going for a purse of $121,000. This race is uh, for four year olds and upwards field of 16 horses going about the 4,400 meter trip or the distance of ground of two miles and three quarters on the turf course. This is the longest race of the week. It's also the final race of the week. Um, it's been a very good Royal Ascot, I think. Um, and uh, let's end it off good here with this race. It's the ending of the pick four. As a top selection, I like the 11 horse Thomas Hobson. I'm going to go 11 3 12 in the tri cast of the trifecta. 11 3 12 tri cast trifecta. I think any one of these three horses can be, um, you know, have a chance to win. So I'll use them all three in my pick four to end it off but as a top selection i like the 11 horse thomas hobson ryan moore is on this willie mullins train eight year old gelding here um you know this horse's most recent out came on the 7th of november at flemington two miles in the melbourne cup he finished six by nine and quarter lengths and he, he just had a little bit of a wide post right which i think cost him the weight the race he did have low weight there but he, he just never really was into it and a little bit too wide to get the victory um before that doncaster two miles and a quarter on soft ground or excuse me yielding ground in the group one or excuse me group three doncaster cup 
this horse finished second by one half lengths behind Desert Skyline. This horse, he closed a little bit at the end, but he just needed that extra kick. And then at York in the Lonsdale Cup, he finished seventh by four and three quarter lengths. The ground was a little bit wetter than he probably wanted uh, that afternoon, and he just never was really into it. But he ran a very good second place finish in this race last year. Second place by one quarter lengths. He closed up well. He just missed, but, you know, it wasn't a bad race. Um, if he saved a little bit more ground, I think he can. He could have won. He did break from barrier number 13 last year. This year, he's breaking from barrier number 3, which I think is a good poster, and I think he should run a big one. The only problem with this horse is the price sucks. He's 7-5 to five here in North America, which is, you know, just terrible. But still, other than that, he, sh he should still run a big one, so watch out for him. A little bit of a price play here is a 3 horse for me. Nearly caught. He's a 10-1. to one. James Doyle's on this Hugh Morrison train, uh, eight-year-old gallon by New Approach. His most recent outing came on, in Germany on the 20th of May at Hofergarten. Two miles, 3,200 meters in the Group 2, Corner Group International, 47 Olander Stakes. This horse finished second by length, and he was just a little bit too wide again that day to get the victory. But it was an improvement off his start before, which came the 21st of April at Nottingham. Um, a <clears throat> mile, three quarters in a Class 1 listed stakes. This horse finished fourth by four lengths, and he never really just, he never got a good closing kick. He probably needed the race since it was his first off the layoff. Um, also, the ground was very wet, and I think with the dry ground, firm ground today, he should really excel a lot more. But before that, I asked got on sloppy, sloppy ground last fall, two miles in a long distance uh, cup. You know, he finished eighth by 39 lengths, and he was never there. He didn't handle the ground at all. You know, the ground was rated soft, but it was on the heavy, heavier side of soft. Um, but before the uh, Ascot race, I think he ran a very terrific race at Newmarket, two miles in the listed stakes. He finished second by length. He quickened up nicely. He wasn't going to catch the winner, but he, he ran a good race. I think he'd definitely stay the two miles and six furlongs today, and I'll, I'll take my chances with him at 10 to 1 to upset. Um, he'll get a small each way wager from me uh, for, um, you know, to you know to use. Uh, another horse I think can run a big one here. Here's the 12 horse count octave. Uh, Qatar Racing owned. Ocean Murphy gets the leg up for Andrew Balding, who trains this uh, four year old colt by Frankel. When I think about Frankel, I don't think about two miles and six furlong stairs, but still, um, you know, this horse has proven he can stay. His most recent outing came at York, mile three quarters in the Yorkshire Cup. He, he did finish fifth by seven three quarter lengths behind Stradivarius, who won the Gold Cup earlier this week. But, you know, he, he never really had the, the chance to get going that day. With a longer distance, I think he can. Also, this race is not near as tough as that race. Before then, the Jockey Club stakes at uh, Newmarket, Mom half May the 5th, he finished third by five and a quarter lengths, and he, again, he stayed well, he didn't weaken out of it, but he didn't quicken up out of it either. It was an okay race, but before then, a Class 5 novice at Wolverhampton, a mile and a half, April the 10th, he won by a neck, 50 cents to the dollar favorite, heavyweight, he just won very nicely from that wide trip. Um, you know, he finished sixth in last year's St. Ledger, and he, you know, he, he he's proven he could stay. I think here today, at 5-1, to one, I'll take my chances with him. A horse you definitely want to use on the pick for here in North America to end it off. So to recap my selections now for race number six from Royal Alaska, the 535, the final race of the meeting, it's the Queen Alexandra Stakes as a top selection. I like the 11 horse, Thomas Hobson. I'm going to go 11, 3, 12 in the TriCast of the Trifecta. I'll go 11, 3, 12 in my pick fours to end it off. So good luck to all. Please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kid 5 for more selections from race courses around the world, and join me all summer long for more previews from all across the world. Um, I'll have you know next week you have the uh, Queen's Plate from Woodbine. Um, I know there's a, a good race coming up from South Africa in a few weeks' time. Um, uh, you have uh, some good racing coming up from uh, France in a few weeks' time from uh, Deauville. Um, you know you have Saratoga here in North America around the corner. I'll, I'll be covering everything, so go join me on YouTube for that. Good luck, everybody. And I uh, hope you made some money this week.